What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. Today we're gonna do one of those popular by demand videos. Actually, people are requesting, Jeff, you have to talk about DK Metcalf. And you might be thinking to yourself, I don't know who DK Metcalf is. If you haven't already heard, this is DK Metcalf, a receiver out of Ole Miss who just participated in the NFL Combines and did some pretty impressive things. His statistics were pretty much off the charts and everyone's talking about him. It's not the fact that he's obviously jacked, He's a receiver, he's a big guy, 6'3", 228, 34 and 7 eighths inch length arms, guys. That, that's actually a, a foot longer than my arms. And he's got hands that can pretty much catch any football. No problem. But what we're focusing on, what everybody's focusing on, and the subject of this video is his body fat percentage was reported at 1.6%. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, is that even possible? And, and hopefully you're saying, is that even good? Is that even healthy for an athlete? So I wanted to kind of delve into that because the one thing we do know right off the bat is it, this is probably not accurate. And there's a few reasons why I believe that to be the case. The first one is sort of observation because this is someone else who was actually reported to be just under 2% body fat for a competition. This is the, the late Andres Munzer. And, and catch the word late because he, he's not here anymore. It's, it's not necessarily a good thing to be this shredded. And we'll get to that in a second. But this, you can probably agree, looks a little bit different than what Metcalf looked like. There's a lot more striations in here. There's a lot more muscle definition going on here. There's a lot more unhealthy look to this body than what you saw on DK. Muscular, yes, but this looks a lot more extreme. This was reported to be 2% body fat. I would much more likely agree with this than I would with DK. Now, there's a couple other things though that are more important. And this is what we talk about the data collection side of it. What's going on at the combines. There's two methods of collection here for the body fat percentages. One's utilizing the Bob Pod, which has been going on now for over 12 years, I believe, 13 years. And then we have the DEXA scan. The DEXA scan is something that's been in included into the testing process just of late. Actually, this year was the first year that they included it, introduced this year. So what's the main difference? Well, first of all, with the Bob Pod, it's, a, it's a, a, a volumetric measurement. It's relying on the, dis the displacement of air inside the bod pod when the athlete's outside of it and then when they step inside of it. Very similar to how they used to measure body fat by water displacement with underwater testing. So it's a volume measurement and there's a margin of error to this of actually up to two and a half to five percent. Not off of the number, but literally body fat percentage points up two and a half to five percent, which means even someone that's registering at two percent could come in as high as seven percent off of a Bob Pod measurement. So that's a problem, okay? And some research even suggests that this margin is even greater than that. But the reason why is that this assessment is basically based off of calculations, all right? We're basically calculating, utilizing the information of the displacement of the volume. So it, it's subject to some, some drastic error. The benefit here is that it's pretty easy to understand results. You get a little printout, there's your results, and a lot of the scouts prefer the easy to report method. A lot of the media outlets will prefer the easy to report method here. That's where we're pro probably getting this information from. Because we know that the DEXA scan, again, something new, is actually privy only to the scouting uh, departments of these teams that hasn't been publicly disclosed, and therefore we can kind of uh, guess with confidence that these results are not what we're going off of. We're really going off of these. But even over here, guys, while the method is a lot more accurate, we're using x-rays to pass through the body to come up with the measurements, it's still not perfect, right? It's using actual measurements to, to gather the data, which is better than using calculations, but there's still some limitations to even these numbers here. And we know that the data output here is very, very complicated. They, they actually used an outside third party to present these statistics to these scouting departments, and they're so long and detailed, I still don't think they've actually gone through and determined how they're gonna utilize all this information. So once again, they relied back on this. But I think the question is, is that healthy? Is it even good? Should we be, should we be happy that DK Metcalf is at 1.6% if it was even true? And the answer is no, especially when it comes to athletes and when it comes to the guys watching this channel, I hope. And that is, you, you, there's a sliding scale here. If we were to look at a rough estimate here of body fat percentage on the bottom from 0% all the way up to let's say 45%, and then we looked at the injury risk. Injury risk meaning any of the dangers that come along with having an extremely low level of body fat percentage, which I'm gonna cover here in a second. You're gonna see this dramatic shift here that when you're at these low, super low levels in zero to 5% range, you have an incredibly high risk 
of injury here. And it, it could be something extremely serious like fatality, or it could be something more on the lines of career threatening, just in terms of your ability to stay healthy because your joints are, so, are severely uh, under lubricated. You have, uh, well, let's look at some of those things. We talk about what are some of these concerns. Temperature regulation. It'd be tough to regulate your own temperature. I hope he doesn't get drafted by Green Bay. It'd be a bad place to try to play football if you can't regulate your own temperature. Vision. You can have visual problems. I actually talked about my own self in the past where my extreme uh, avoidance of fat in my diet led me to have some photo uh, sensitivity. I couldn't go out in the sunlight without having to squint. And that's because we know the reliance on the photoreceptors in the, of, of the eyes re requiring uh, fat to, to, to operate uh, at, at full function. Reduced immune system. That's not a good thing for any athlete. Increased risk of injury, a lot of times relating to uh, joint dysfunction because of the low levels of body fat. Fatigue, brain fog, nothing good about this, guys. Again, even if you're not an athlete, but you're trying to just compete in the sport of life, it's never going to be good. A desk job, anything, where you got to think. Thyroid dysfunction, all this stuff is bad. All right, so we don't want to be that low. And that sliding scale, we saw the sweet spot would be more up in that sort of 8 to 12% body fat range. All right, there's reasons where we can kind of, aesthetically we would be where we want to be, but performance-wise we wouldn't be sacrificing where we want to be. And that's going to change with age, and I'll cover this in a future video where there's a bit of a sliding scale there too, and of course men versus women, I'll go into that in depth. But the fact is, that's what we want to do. So, but what, what else should we focus on? Because the truth here is not just about the body fat, but what about the numbers in, in general? Look back at his numbers. Again, I mentioned impressive statistics. A 40-yard dash of 433. That is going to be very difficult to cover. A bench press of 27 reps of 225. A vertical jump 40 and a half inches. Broad jump 134 inches in a broad jump. The three cone drill 738, and then a 20 yard shuttle, which is the 5105, 4.5 seconds. I want to underscore something very important when it comes to, to, to these numbers because I've just I, I feel like I've been harping on this a lot of late, and that is numbers alone don't tell you anything. Because numbers in isolation are never good. Being one-dimensional, which is something I talked about a lot, focusing on only strength in your workouts, is an extremely limited, uh, improper way to focus on training. Now, if you want, especially if you want to be an athlete, you can't talk about training like an athlete if you are focused solely on strength. Is strength an important component? It's one of the most important. But in isolation, it's actually could be pretty limiting. How do I know that? Well, we could look at Bench press alone, the performance of bench press. Do you know that since 2012, the, the guys who logged the four highest scores in the bench press, with the highest being, I think, 46 reps or 44 reps or something of, of 225, do you know that of the top four guys, only one guy is still playing in the league? And, and of those top guys, two of them were out of the league after just a single year or a single season? It's not enough, right? I talked about you can be a big guy, big meathead, big strong guy, but if you have no other skills, you're not going to be a great athlete. You could same same thing. You could be as fast as, as this guy, four three three forty. But if you have no route running abilities, how are you going to separate from the defenders? It's a problem. You need to be agile. You have to have, have agility. Maybe your three cone drill is great. You got some agility, but you have no speed. That's a problem. Maybe your your vertical jump is incredible, forty point five, great, off the charts. But you have no strength. So when you're up against other guys in a physical situation trying to compete to get up for that ball, you're going to get squashed. Not good. So any number in isolation is no good. But I will say this, predicated on these numbers here, things look pretty good for DK Metcalf. Why? He's got some good company here. Julio Jones, one of the top receivers in the entire league. He's got him out, outweighed by eight pounds. He's a little bit taller than him. Ten more reps on the bench press. Faster in the 40. Higher vertical. If he stays healthy, if he's not actually a true 1.6% body fat, he's got a higher chance of staying healthy, stay on the field, he can do some amazing things. One last thing, guys. We get the chance to play general manager here. You and I, all right? I want to ask you, based on numbers, because there's another caution to numbers here, and that is you've got to be careful with numbers. I want to ask you if you would draft this guy right here, this athlete. Would you draft the guy who ran a 40-yard dash in 5.3? Okay? Not 4.33, 5.3, one second slower. How about a guy who couldn't get a single rep of the bench press at 225? Okay, number three. 24 and a half inch vertical. Almost 15 inches less than DK. A broad jump of <clears throat> 99 inches, not 134. God, this isn't looking so good so far. Three cone drills, actually not so bad, 7.2 in the 5.10.5. It's actually pretty decent, 4.38. Would you draft this guy? Most of you out there would say no, but you probably know that where I'm going at this, I, I would. I would draft him. 
He's a pretty good player. And sometimes you have to consider the intangibles, guys. It's not always just about the numbers. It's about the makeup. So guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Remember, body fat alone, I'm a guy who carries a low body fat percentage. I'm aware of that. But even I'm above 5%. I could never go walk around at 2%, 3% body fat and think that I was healthy or call myself healthy. I think there's an incredible importance on staying at the right body fat levels and setting the right goals for yourself and realizing that there's more to it than just even that. Even just of all the numbers there, 1.6% should not be all we're focusing on. Guys, if you found the video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know also what I'm going to cover in the future videos, and I'll do that for you. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click on your notifications so you never miss a video when it's published. And if you're looking for programs, guys, that take into consideration all the elements of training like an athlete, not just one of them, all of them, and realize how important it is to integrate them all together, we do that for you in a step-by-step -step plan over at athletenext.com. All right, guys, we'll be back again soon. See you.